Hello and welcome to online worship for the New Hope Baptist Church of Metuchen, New Jersey, where the Rev. Dr. Ronald L. Owens is our senior pastor. We invite you to clap your hands, stomp your feet, and join us as we worship the true and living God. Good morning, good morning, good morning, New Hope. Good morning, virtual audience. We say praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, anybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Somebody, anybody. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. We come to worship the Lord on this morning. I, I, I know it's crazy out there, but we come to give God praise. We come to give God glory. We come to give God honor. It's because we are alive. It's not by happenstance. It's not by circumstance. It's not by accident. Why? Because God knows the plans that he has for us. And because we are still here, we just might as well go ahead and give God some praise hallelujah some glory hallelujah and some honor because if it had not been for the lord on my side where would we be even in this pandemic i'm just going to give god praise today because i'm glad to be in worship i want to be in the church but i'm not in the church i'm at home i'm going to praise god anyway i'm going to praise god anyhow because he deserves all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. This is the fruit of our lips, is to give God praise. So welcome to our virtual worship this Sunday morning. And so at this time, we're going to call on Minister Rodney Smith, who's going to come forth to lead us in prayer, after which our Unity Choir is going to come and give us a selection. Let's receive him with a glory hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. Oh, bow with me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us this morning. We thank you now for just allowing us to come into your presence, God. Although it's a virtual worship, God, we believe you rest on each and every one of us right where we are, God. And we say thank you for keeping us until this present moment, God. We thank you for your protection and your provision until this very moment, God. And it's in this very moment where we choose to recognize you have been nothing but perfect, God. You have been a deliverer. You have been a healer. You have been a provider. You have been a protector, God. And right now, we want to give you back a praise and a worship like none we've ever given you before for everything you have done, God, for the things you are presently doing, God, the activity of our lungs, our limbs, our eyes, Eyelids, God, we are so very grateful, so very thankful. God, we ask that you bless this service. We ask that you be pleased with everything that takes place, God. We ask that you hear from us and allow us to hear from you, dear God. Bless the one that will bring forth the word. Cause it to be relevatory, dear God. Cause it to break chains, dear God. Cause it to bring someone to you. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen and amen. You give me that joy. You give me that joy like a river. You give me that mercy I never deserve. You give me that love, nothing better. You give me that sweet peace like never before. There's nobody like. There's nobody like God, like God. I'm talking about my God. You give me that joy like a river. You give me that mercy. You give me that mercy I never deserve. You give me that love. You give me that love, nothing better. You give me that sweet. You give me that sweet peace like never before. There's nobody like. There's nobody like God. Like God. I'm talking about my. I'm talking about 
talking about my God, my God. There's nobody like There's nobody like God, my God. I'm talking about my God, my God. Nobody like the Lord. I believe somebody else said, I searched the whole world and I couldn't find nobody like the Lord. And I don't know what that search looked like for you, but I'm pretty sure it looks different for all of us. I mean, someone was searching on a corner. Someone was searching in the bars, in the clubhouses, wherever you were searching and found out there was nobody. Once you found them, I don't know where you found them and you could have found them in the bar and you could have found them on the corner, but you found out also there was nobody, nobody like the Lord because he is so, so good. Thank you, Unity Choir, for that selection. And at this time, Reverend Donna Awusu Ansala is going to come forth uh, and give us our scripture reading and then Reverend Jackson is going to come after her and uh, bless our offering. Amen, good morning, New Hope. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 37. Psalm 37, and I'll be reading verses one through 11. These words are inscribed as security of those who trust in the Lord. Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers, for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will do it. And he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord 
and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of evil doers or those who prosper in his way. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil doing. For evil doers will be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. Yet a little while and the wicked man will be no more. And you will look carefully for his place and he will not be there. But the humble will inherit the land, hallelujah, and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us continue in our worship service. It is offering time. It's time to be obedient to the Lord, to give back a portion to what he's already given to us. Uh, God deals with us in grace and by grace. He, he provides that which he asks for and then accepts that when we give according uh, to obedience to him. Uh, there are three uh, ways that, that we can uh, honor the Lord and glorify the Lord with our giving. The first is give a fly, you go uh, to your app and follow whatever instructions they give you uh, there. Uh, the second way is you can go uh, through your financial institution and follow their instructions. Um, and the third way you can give is that you can uh, mail it in, uh, write your check to uh, New Hope Baptist Church of Metuchen, 45 Hampton Street, Metuchen, New Jersey, 08840. Those are the three ways uh, that we can honor the Lord and glorify the Lord and be obedient to what the Lord commands. Uh, let us pray. Most kind and giving Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your grace. We thank you, O oh God, for all that we have. Uh, you have provided to us through your grace. As we come now, O oh God, we just uh, pray for the faith and, and the courage to be obedient, O oh God, to, to do that which you have commanded us to do. We ask now, O oh Father, that as we uh, glorify you with our gifts, Father, we pray that we would, you would give us the wisdom uh, to do that which builds up your kingdom, that, Father, all that we do and all that we give might be to your glory. Uh, we thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you for the fountains of your blessings. Uh, this is our prayer, and we pray it in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with love and thanksgiving. Amen and amen. It is proclamation time, new hope. Jesus said in the new uh, translation, living translation, and he told them, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So the next voice that you will hear after our praise team give us our sermonic selection will be that of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Ronald L. Owens, we want you to sit in the spirit of prayer that the word of God may go forth and that it may fall on good ground and we may grow thereby in Jesus' name. Don't give up. 
on God Cause he won't give up on you Cause he's able Yeah, he's able Yes, he is Say God God is able to Just do. what he said Just what he said Say God is God is able to just do what he said just what he said he will do He's gonna fulfill He's gonna fulfill every every promise to you That's why I won't give up Don't give up on God Cuz he won't Cuz he won't give up on you He's able We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and say to you that God is still in control. 
we thank you for your joining us on this Sunday morning, and we praise God for another glorious day in worship virtually at the New Hope Baptist Church, where the building is closed, but the church is open. And we thank God for our worship team that comes with us every Sunday morning to make this uh, broadcast uh, 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 possible, and we thank them for their diligence and surely for their assistance in our worship experience. I want to particularly thank uh, our team, our ministerial staff for last Sunday and uh, the preaching prowess of Reverend uh, Crystal White in my absence as I was uh, visiting a son preaching for him in ministry. And so we want to thank our ministerial staff and Crystal White for doing such a phenomenal job on last Sunday to bring the gospel uh, to the New Hope Baptist Church and all of our audience that is with us each Sunday. We thank God for the opportunity now to come to you with a word from heaven, and we ask that you will be prayerful as we share with you the scripture text for today and ask that you will come with me to the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. There in the holy writ of the weeping prophet, there in the 31st chapter, and starting from the 31st verse. The 31st chapter of Jeremiah, starting from the 31st verse, reading down to the 34th verse. Amen. In the King James Version, these words are written, and I lift them for your hearing. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities, and I will remember their sin no more. I'm going to have you working a little bit today. And we ask that you will come with me now to uh, the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter of Hebrews, the 15th through the 22nd verses. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. starting from the 15th verse. Hebrews, the 15th chapter, I mean, the 10th chapter, the 15th verse. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness, to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, 
which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the professions of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as ye see the day approaching. The 10th chapter of Hebrews, the 15th through the 25th verses. Beloveds of God, let me present to you as a title and as a theme, as a subject for the message today, a powerful promise, a powerful promise. In the book of Jeremiah, the passage of scripture that I read caught my attention. As now God is declaring to Israel a new covenant. A new covenant between man and God, a new covenant, a new promise. God reflects on the tablets of the law that was the covenant between Israel and God that was written on stone. And God now declares that there will be a new covenant not written on stone, but on the very hearts of men and women. It captivated me to research that passage of scripture, whether it was for the people of Israel in Jeremiah's time, or whether it was futuristic for the passages that I have read to you in the book of Hebrews. Let me share with you that God was speaking of a new covenant that would come into a new age with he himself bringing about the covenant as he did by the hand of the writing of the tablets in the wilderness after the bondage of Egypt. But this time, the covenant would come through his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It would come to renew the spirits of men and women and to resurrect them from their uh, separation of God and their sinful, dreadful state to a renewed state, a redeeming state, a restored state. And so today I want to talk about a pow powerful promise. Listen to me carefully as I say to you that no one likes a promise that is not fulfilled. No one wants you to make a promise that you cannot carry out. It's nothing worse than someone who gives their word that they will do something and come short of what they said they would do. Especially when we who are the uh, recipients of the promise based our actions, our thoughts, and our future plans on the promise of someone who we trust, but yet they fail to fulfill the promise. I'll be there when you're sick and find out that when you get sick, the person who promised to be there doesn't show up. Someone says, I'll be there to help you to clean out your garage. And, and, and when that day comes, you're standing there waiting and they make all kinds of flimsy excuses of why they couldn't make it. They promise to help you to get out of some financial debt that you're in and, and they come with excuses that they didn't have the resources to help you like they thought they would and you had depended on them. How disappointing it is, even when the person is sincere and says that they want to do what they promised to do, but yet when the day came, they couldn't live up to the promise. But here in this scripture, our God makes a powerful promise that goes beyond the moment and the time in Jeremiah's life. He shares with the prophet Jeremiah a promise that will be fulfilled some six to seven hundred years 
later culminated in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He makes a promise that this promise that he makes will be a promise that will fulfill not just the generation that it comes to, but every generation after. He makes a promise to Jeremiah that every person that is in the midst of this covenant will be blessed, not only for generations to come, but for eternity. He makes a promise to us that the covenant will not be written on stone. People will not have to share one with another and remind us of who God is and what God can do. But this covenant now will reflect on the fact that the truth of God will be revealed through Jesus Christ and every heart will see it for themselves. Millions and tens of millions of people have committed their life to that very promise that God would renew their spirit, redeem them, and restore them. We have stood on the promises of God that through that promise that every one of us would be secure in salvation that would wash us as white as snow. Preacher after preacher has declared it in pulpits all over the world in Christendom and outside of Christendom to remind us that God's promise never fails. We can stand on God's promise because he doesn't look just at the present. He looks at the past and the future. And based on all that he sees, he makes a promise that will fulfill whatever need we have. The reason why we can trust God's promise is because his promise has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ in the sense of redemption. God has redeemed us. Redeeming means that a price has been paid for a debt, that we have been freed from a bondage where the bell has been paid. Redemption is the word that, that brings us understanding that God now sends his son Jesus Christ into the world to redeem mankind from the bondage that they were in. And, and once you are free from the bondage, never forgetting the price that was paid. Jesus now pays the price for each and every one of us, not just by empty promises, but fulfilling the promise of God all the way back in Jeremiah by giving his life on a cross that you and I might find freedom through the blood of Jesus Christ. That through his sacrifice, no longer does God look at us in a dreadful way, but God looks at us through Jesus Christ and never remembering, as if never remembering the sin that we had committed. Aren't you glad that God now receives us just as if we had not sinned? He justified us so that we might stand before him, relieved of the burden of sin, and call upon his name. He does not turn a deaf ear to us, but he listens to us in spite of our imperfection because the promise has been fulfilled. That he would set a covenant that would never be broken, a covenant that would last for a lifetime, a covenant that would not have to be sealed by the sacrifice of a lamb or a bullock on the altar. But because of the lamb of God called Jesus Christ, one sacrifice made that now splits the veil of the holies of holy where we can now stand in the powerful presence of God with only the high priest advocating by the name of Jesus that when we call on his name, no matter what we ask for, no matter what we need, no matter what we stand in need of, God will make it happen. Do I have a witness in the house? We have a promise that no matter what we're going through, God will not fail us. We have a promise that no matter what enemy stands against us, God will fight the battle. Well, Pastor, how can that happen? What has happened that makes that covenant promise true to our lives? What does that redemption bring to each and every one of us? What it brings is a restoration of relationship. 
You see, after we have been freed from our bondage in this promise of God, after the price has been paid, after the bail has been set and paid for to free us, now God restores us, restores us in relationship. No longer do we have to come to a priest. No longer do we have to come to the high priest, earthly high priest. We have a heavenly high priest. No longer is there a veil that separates us from the holiness of God. We stand in his presence and in the full power of his holiness. We have a relationship with God. We are no longer scoundrels. We're no longer crooks. We're no longer rejected. But now we are received as the children of God. <clears throat> he restores a relationship that he meant to be in the Garden of Eden with Adam. He restores a relationship where we now become companions with God and, and God becomes our companion as he meant for it to be in the Garden of Paradise. We have a relationship. We know him and he knows us and, and we no longer have to fear him, but we can come to him for he's our friend. He's our burden bearer. He's our trouble solver. He is the one that can make a way out of no way. You can go to him and whatever you ask for because of the relationship. He loves us and we love him because of the relationship and because he loves us and because we love him, we trust him to give us just what we need. He knows us and we know him. Aren't you glad this morning that you know the Lord? <coughs> Aren't you glad this morning that you can go to him without fear and give him your darkest sorrow? Aren't you glad you know him? that he is the one who holds us in the palm of his hand. Aren't you glad you know him? He is the one that sets our restless spirit at rest. We know him. He is the one who washed us up and made us whole again. We know him. He is the one that mended our broken hearts and, and put it back together again. We know him. He is the one we pray to and talk to and Asked for a miracle to happen in the life of a loved one. And God came in a mysterious way and said, Lord, when we cried, Lord, he said, it's all right. We know him, don't we? Because he is not only the lily of the valley and the rose of Sharon, but he is our burden bearer. We know him. Not only because he's the bright and morning star but he is our friend that sticks closer than a brother. We know him because he is the one that eases our sorrows and takes away our pain. We know him, don't we? It's because of the relationship that we have with God that makes the difference in who we are because of who he is. And then, beloveds of God, I'm so glad that in this book of Hebrews, it fulfills and reminds us that not only are we redeemed by God, and not only are we restored in relationship with God, but now we're renewed with a bold spirit. We no longer have to shamefully come to the altar. We no longer have to sneak to the altar. We no longer have to sit in the back of the church and wonder if God will hear us. But we can come boldly to the throne of grace. We have been released of the burden of our sins and we can now stand in the presence of God as the children of God, redeemed by God, and have a bold spirit that we can stand on his promise. Stand on his promise that he'll never leave us or forsake us. Stand on his promise that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Stand on the promise that, that he will be with us even until the end of the age. Stand on the promise that he will receive us when we are heavy laden and burdened, and he will give us rest. We can come to that 
boldness of the of the foot of the throne and declare our troubles, our cares, and our desires, and and know that God is true to His promise. Aren't you glad this morning that whatever God promises, He can do. He has done. Aren't you glad this morning that we don't have to scratch our head and wonder if God will come in a midnight hour? We don't have to worry when we're going through the struggles of life whether we have a help on the way. We don't have to look around to the left or to the right and wonder if God is there with us. God says that he'll always be there. God has shown us that no matter what storms we go through, no matter what trouble we're in, God is there every step of the way. And we think when we think we're going through the storm all by ourselves, when we look back, we realize that we couldn't have gotten through it without the help of God. And when we recollect those times when our spirit was so low that we didn't think we would make it, somehow God propped us up on every leaning side and allowed us to walk boldly through the storm, knowing that God was there with us all of the way. And so today I thank God for the powerful promise of God that assures us and reminds us of the redemption of God that paid the price that we might be saved from the bondage of sin. I'm glad this morning that I can declare to you that through his blood, we've been restored in relationship with God, not only seeing God as a judging God, but a God of a loving God. And I'm glad today that because of it all, we have a renewed spirit, that we can pull back our shoulders and pick up our head and declare that we are the children of God and that nothing can separate us from the love of God and that no matter what we're going through, God will fight the battle for us. I've come to assure you that we may not be able to depend on the pastor or the deacon or the trustee all the time because we are all made of flesh and we are weak in our flesh. But aren't you glad, glad that there's one that you can depend on? one who sits high and looks low, one that holds the power of the lifetime in his hand, one who has declared a promise that we shall always be the children of God because of the sacrifice of his son. Aren't you glad today that we don't have to worry for when everything else fails, we have a God who will never fail us. We have a God that we can go to in the noonday hour, in the midnight hour. We can go to him in the morning early before the sun rises in the sky and declare that we are the children of God. And Lord, we, we, are, we are assured that no matter what we are going through, you have given us the promise that whatever we ask for, you shall give us if it is in your will. And so Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, gets a message from God. And God says, no longer will my law and my promise be on tablets of stone, but I will write it on the hearts of mankind, that wherever they are, they will know that I am a God who keeps my promise. And I declare to you, that whatever God has promised in his word, he's not only keeping it because of the promise, but he's keeping it because of who he is, a God who's perfect in every way, and a God who will never break his promise, that you can always come to him. And whatever he has promised you, you can depend on it and live your life by it. For it's a powerful promise that God will never break, for God keeps his promises. Amen, and amen, and amen. As we, as we go to the Lord, now in prayer, we ask that you might those who are listening who are not in the promise of God nor in the covenant of God nor have received God as your own 
and the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. This is your opportunity to come to the Lord. This is your opportunity to trust God. And even, yes, test God and see if he will not keep his promise to you. That when you come to him, he will not only pay the price and has paid the price for your salvation, but he has the power to restore you and the power to give you a brand new life. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Precious and eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the promise of a promise. That dear Father, you have covenant with us and promised us that you would not only redeem us, not only restore us, but Lord, you would renew us. For those of us who have received you, we thank you for our bold spirit. Not because of what we can do, but Lord, what you have done in us. Today, God, prick someone's heart. Allow them to accept you as Lord and Savior of their life. Allow them to repent and prayerfully pray and admit that they are sinners that need to be saved by the blood of Jesus. And allow them to accept you as the Savior of their life and the lover of their soul. We pray, O oh God, that these words might encourage them to know that they have nothing to fear in you, but they can come boldly to the throne of grace. They can come standing on the promises of God. And now, Lord, have your way with them. Have your way with them. In Jesus' name. The bride says come, the spirit says come. Whosoever let him come and take the water of life. Will you? Will you? Will you accept the Lord Jesus Christ? And his promises that will never separate us, but draw us closer to him. Beloveds of God, I thank you for this time in worship. I thank you for the blessedness of fellowship, even though we are doing it virtually. Uh, I want to encourage you all uh, that there are some who are, are homesick for the sanctuary, but I want you to know that we are trying our best to keep everyone safe. And in this pandemic season, where even in New Jersey, there's an uptick in affection and people who have been affected, we pray that you will uh, be patient with us and patient with God as we enjoy the safety of our sanctuaries and our various homes and to come in fellowship this way as we do uh, with our services and not only our services, but through our Bible studies and through our uh, men and women and other fellowships that now must be through this venue. We pray that God will heal this land quickly and that we will be able to come together in our sanctuaries. But for the time being, we want to keep everyone safe and allow everyone to come back to our sanctuaries. Let us prepare now for the closing prayer and benediction. Every head bow, every eye closed, let us pray together. Precious God, our Father, we thank you for the promises, the covenant promises that you have given unto us. As you have looked down through the generations of time, 700 years uh, to from Jeremiah to the birth of Christ and for the revelation and the revealing that through Jesus Christ, a new covenant has been set. We thank you, O oh God, for those promises that you have given to us and those things that you have fulfilled through your promise that has made us whole. Remind us of our redemption and dear Father, restored us to a relationship with you and to have a renewed spirit, a bold spirit, a spirit not of shame, but dear Father, a spirit of joy 
that we can declare the name of Jesus and recite the fact that we have been saved by his blood and that through our Father in heaven, we have been restored to the family of God and now can declare Abba Father as his sons and daughters. Now, God, we pray that you will dismiss us from this place, but not from your sight. Hold us in the hollow of your hand. Allow us to be the apple of thine eye. And we'll so carefully give you the praise, the glory, and all of the honor. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with this, these people now and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen and Amen.